What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, I am your host, and this is The Campaign Grind. This episode we have Mr. Ray Valdez. What's going on, brother? All right, how you doing? Good, man, good. This episode is actually gonna be very interesting. We got a, a pretty sensitive topic here, um, especially with all this uh, uh, gun control uh, issue going on and stuff like that, not only here locally, but also throughout the entire United States and on a national level, actually. Um, so we actually had a little uh, heated uh, uh, conversation, per se, before we actually started uh, uh, recording this episode. Um, but as always, before we get into the topic, I want to thank you guys for tuning into this week's episode of The Campaign Grind. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Um, if you find any value in this whatsoever, please feel free to share this with your friends, your family. Uh, I guarantee you're going to find some gold nuggets in these episodes. Um, we don't charge to think for these episodes, actually. They're, they're actually free. So... Please, if you find any value whatsoever, feel free to share with your friends, family. Uh, once again, we appreciate the love, we appreciate the support, and this is the Campaign Grind. So, the topic we're going to talk about, all right, and, and I, I already know that this is going to go in many different directions because of this dude over here. So, the topic we're going to be talking about is, should your campaign take a stance on a controversial issue? Now you're probably asking yourself and you're watching this, you're like, yeah, of course my campaign has to take a stance on these controversial issues. Now, not necessarily. There are some times in smaller village campaigns, town campaigns, municipal campaigns, or council seats um, that these issues may not deter any particular voter. But now once you're running in a, in a larger uh, seat for a lot for higher office, I'm sorry, in a state level, in a federal level, it does make a huge difference. Now don't get me wrong. Depending the community you're living in, where you're running for, these issues will kind of make or break your, your, your campaign. So the question is, Ray, should your campaign take a stance on a controversial issue? For example, gun control. If you are running uh -huh. for council, for commissioner, yeah, council or commissioner or even mayor for a small village, town or city, should your campaign Take a stance on gun control. Well, you know my uh, my feeling and uh, and uh, my experience has been that every every campaign has a platform, depending upon what's important in your community, in your specific community or or state or local community, whatever you're running for, you know, and uh, you have to have a feel of you know of uh, what it is, uh, how the community feels about whatever issue it is, whether it's gun control. Gun control is combined with many things. It's just not gun control. Actually, it's safety. It's a lot of people, you know, in the last 10 years, we've had 6,000 women who have died uh, on domestic violence from gun control, from, from the use of a, of a gun. 6,000 women. You know, that's more than the people that died in Iraq or Afghanistan and so on. And that's 6,000 women who have died as a consequence of a use of a gun in a violent dispute with a, uh, a concubine or, you know. Don't talk partner. to me. Talk, talk to them. So they they want to know what your thoughts are. My, my thoughts is, you know, uh, I, <coughs> I don't see the uh, need for uh, any person to really have a automatic or semi-automatic AR-15 or you know AK-47 or whatever they want to call, uh, you know when you're not in uh, safety keeping like a policeman or national guard or anyone like that. So you know that that's my essence. But depending upon the community that you're running for, depending upon your opponents and so on, you know, you got to get a feel because as an elected official, you don't represent yourself. You represent, you better be in pace with the community that you have to serve. Okay, but because you, you are elected to serve there. So when you're running for that office, when you're running as a candidate to represent that community, you better know how that community feels about the issues. You know, yeah, but you're, but you're I, giving me the political answer. Yeah, I want to yeah. know: Should your campaign take a stance on a controversial issue? In this case, oh, I think you, know, you you have to take a stance on any controversial issue because you'll be asked 
when you go to debates, uh, you know, you go to a town hall meeting and so on, and your opponents are going to be there. There's going to be discussions on, uh, you know, on the type of weapon or or the use or the uh, safety issues, like a school safety is, a, you know, a, a primary issue right now, and so on. And so, you know, you have to take a stance. No, okay, but how about this? So if you're running for the, well, the viewers that we got, not only on YouTube, we have it on Instagram, on all social media platforms, and the listeners that hear this on, on SoundCloud. So if you're running for a um, nonpartisan seat, once again, local office, mm -hmm. you're not Republican, you're not Democrat, it doesn't show up on your on your on the ballot. Mm -hmm. You are running, I don't know, in a conservative village, community, mm -hmm. city, town, whatever. But you are a Democrat mm -hmm. and you feel very strong about gun control. OK, should your campaign at this point, knowing the demographics of your constituency, mm -hmm. should your campaign come out and say that you are in favor or against more gun control? Well, uh, you know, that that's a uh, that's a, a the way that you're presenting that is not is not, you know, <laughs> it's really not, uh, uh, you know, it's it's, it's it's not substantial because the situation <laughs> is that you're, you're not going there, uh, you know, if 80% or 60% or whatever percentages of your community and you're running as a candidate, you might have two or three other opponents <laughs> that best represent the feeling of that, of that community. If you're anti-gun control and you're running in a community has, you know, that has just suffered uh, like in Parkland uh, with the death of 17 uh, children, then you know, uh, gun control might be a a, a, a debatable issue. Up on the, uh, you know, on the same order, do you want to have a, a hardness school, or do you want to you know just continue to use only the public safety like police and sheriff and so on? Will they be response uh, be responsive and, and timely to save your your child? You know, you don't see these things happening, but when it touches you personally, then it makes a difference. That's when it so, gets So, you know, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, these communities are very uh, specific on the demographics. There's communities, Hispanic communities, black communities, gay communities, straight communities. You know, it's all kinds of communities. So, you know, you better know if you're running for one of these uh, specific communities, where you stand before you run and where your opponents are standing because you might be wasting your time. You might be running for a seat that you're not going to best represent the feeling of your community. So, you know, your your essence has to be in keeping with the grain or the pace of the community that you plan to serve, okay. you know. So I, I just got a question here. It's, they actually emailed it. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to shoot us an email, pedro at dscampaigns.com, pedro at dscampaigns.com, or follow us on all social media platforms at Campaign Mentor, or give us a call, 1-888-688-DIAZ. Once again, 1-888-688-DIAZ. So the question is, if I'm running for office, um, hold on, let me open it, close it. There we go. So the question actually comes in from Michael. Michael asks, if I'm running for office, should I go by what the what polls tell me I should say? Well, uh, uh, you know, my feeling is a lot of polls they represent who who, who paid for the poll. I you know, I it agree. depends. You know, you, you sometimes you get a, a, a poll that is a, a 25 percent one way more than the other poll, and then the, and then you know you're going to be confused. You, I, I, my my personal feeling is, you better understand the composition, uh, demographics, and political composition of the community that you're running in, and that uh, you know that and and that your interest to represent those sentiments are there so that you can best be a sincere, honest elected official if you happen to be the one who the people vote for get and get elected. Yeah. Yeah. To, to answer your question, Michael, um, I you got to take that with a grain of salt, man. Yeah. Um, we like to do polling not only to figure out exactly how well or how bad the candidate is doing, but also to be able to develop the campaign message. 
Um, so an example I give all of our clients when we do the initial uh, interview is, you know, the northern part of the district likes Coca-Cola. You can't knock on the door and sell them Sprite. So, yes, we do use polling to get an idea of or a snapshot of what it is that the voters want. And, and that's how we kind of tailor the campaign message. Now, we do present the campaign message to the client, to the candidate, before we start mass production, put it on the website, bomb cards, mailers, so on and so forth. Um, so what I could, what, what I recommend for you, man, is look at the poll numbers, you know, see what the main issues are. Um, if there's an issue there that that pulls very well, but you're not 100% behind that, you know that's something. That's a decision you're gonna have to make. You're the one that's gonna have to sleep with yourself at night, um, because I know, especially now, uh, especially with gun control, is because it's it's such a huge issue now. We got elections coming up now in August and in November, and I don't see gun control going anywhere from now till then. So it's definitely gonna be a big campaign issue. And what I've started to see is candidates uh, or incumbents actually start kind of shifting. Uh, their message and the way that, that they're presenting themselves, especially when it comes to issues regarding gun control, LG, the, the LGBTQ community, and even the NRA and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you feel comfortable with whatever it is that you're going to be promoting with your campaign. At the end of the day, you are the brand, you are the candidate, you are the one that people are going to vote for. So if you if you only want to base your campaign on what the polls say, you know that's fine. But once again, you got to feel comfortable with what you are putting out there, and you're the one that's going to have to sleep uh, uh, good at night yourself. So that's a decision you got to make yourself, Mike. Positions between candidates uh, during a campaign, you know, is a whole different thing. That's why. What do you mean? When, well, that's why you see that uh, a lot of people are not honest and sincere, uh, in 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 really. Uh, serving the community that they get elected for, and they they go and they lie, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why I say, uh, that's why I say, make sure that if you're running for an area, people are very receptive. People are not stupid nowadays. Everybody has access to Facebook and media, all kinds of you know uh, social media and so on and so forth. So today, people are more informed than we've ever been before in the past, yeah. you know, in the last half century. And uh, uh, I want to say a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of elected officials get elected, uh, I mean, a lot of candidates get elected and then they go there and they can never fulfill their promises to the community. And the reason is in sincere fact, they are not the best person to represent that community. A lot of times people get elected because of they have a lot of money, they have uh, strong support from uh, special interests and all these kind of things. But that doesn't mean that they are going to be the best candidate to represent that the needs of that specific community. You know, if you're not sincere in your feelings, you better study. Maybe you need to move to a different area before you run, you know, for that, for that uh, uh, position. Because if you're not, if you're against gun, uh, guns, and you're in a community that is pro-guns or pro-school safety or that they want to harden the school and so on and so forth, you know, you be careful. You got to really analyze the whole context of the, of the thing yeah. before you, you know, run. Yep. Um, and guys, if, if you're watching this episode, you're running for office, you're thinking of running for office, make sure you check out electionmarketplace.com. This is a plug. Uh, make sure you check out electionmarketplace.com for all of your campaign needs, design, printing, uh, websites, uh, so on and so forth, stickers, yeah. banners, everything. Anything yeah. your campaign needs, you can get it there on, on electionmarketplace.com. Once again, electionmarketplace.com. And I'm going to give you guys 15% off. It's SAVE15. Make sure you use promo code SAVE15 when you check out or at checkout on electionmarketplace.com. Yeah. And I say, you know, uh, from my own experience, Go check out electionmarketplace.com. Why do I say that? Why well, do you first say of that, all, right? I know Pedro, <laughs> and I know Pedro's experience for years, and so on, and also because he comes from a political family, really, and so on. And what I am, uh, uh, what I'm aware of, is the fact that you know, I myself have been a candidate. Yeah. And before, you know, I thought that I was going to run to first, then second, third, and then, you know, I was... Shit, he, he thought he was going to hit a grand slam. Safe, safe in home plate, right? Shit. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, especially if you're, you have a constraint of funds, 
if you don't have a substantial amount of funds and you cannot uh, you cannot fail to be sure on where you're spending your money like in my case you know I went to a couple of different printers I tried to get some printing done yeah, from your campaign, piece, piece milling the piece milling it out, yeah, you and that. and what happened is you I spent ended up money. I spent more, I did yeah. I spent yeah. more money than if I had gone and gotten a package a brand a branded package from the beginning with a, you know which I ended up you know thank you for your assistance and your guidance that was at the and, tail end yeah, of the campaign yeah, but still. And, and that was you know and yeah. then I I you know because we candidates are very emotional you candidates know it all we think yeah we think we know it all <laughs> we think that oh you know I like other friends of mine now have told me I'm gonna run for office because I know a lot of people I said well uh, the people that you know they all live in the same district that you're running for oh I don't or know. do they run or do they live all over the county and you expect that they're gonna donate your funds and that they all no man this is a very very technical a strategic oriented uh, uh, art, the art of politics of campaigning. That's and true. you don't don't waste your time. You don't have time to waste. And and unless you and, and less than time, you have less money to waste. So use your money wisely. And check out electionmarketplace.com. <laughs> So electionmarketplace.com and make sure you use uh, promo code SAVE15 at checkout. That's going to save you 15% off your entire order. Um, but Ray, before before we, we wrap up, so another topic that, that, that um, not topic, it, it still has to do with gun control. But you personally, do you think, and, and I know that we normally don't do these types of episodes, but I think that this is something that we should talk about uh, given the fact that we're from Miami here, Miami-Dade County. Uh, that school shooting that happened a couple of weeks ago happened just north of us, you know, a few miles up, up north from us in Broward. Um, so I think that this is something that we should definitely be talking about. You personally think that school teachers should be armed? Uh, I myself agree with what the uh, president has said, that there is a lot of people who are today are school teachers or they work in school and so on, whether it's the maintenance or other things that there's a lot of jobs at school, coaching, et cetera, et cetera, that have been in the military, that have served long careers in the military, and are very well uh, 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 versed in gun use and so on, and gun control and uh, safety and so on and so forth. I think that the kind of environment that we are in today and the way that our children have been trained for the last at least the last 25 years or, or, or 40 years, I would say, really. Uh, you know, I was taking flying, the flying lessons to get my pilot's license. And I learned all this sitting in, in front of a simulator in a little room with a, a TV screen and a, and a stick like a Nintendo game. And you know what? That's what we do to our kids. When we want to get rid of them because they're bothering us too much and we had a tough day at work, we come home. First, the kid comes home, there is no parental supervision. Yeah. Second, if they come home. Second, when the parents come home, they're arguing, they are still got some uh, uh, work-related work to do at home. Uh, the kids, uh, you know, what we do, we turn the TV on, give them a nice a violent game, uh, cutting heads off and desensitizing our children, seeing them, you know, seven or eight hours like it has happened a year in the last quarter century. Yeah. You know, and they, they, our kids are nice and calm. Or now we give them a cellular and they can, go, you know, Facebook or whatever, Instagram or whatever it is with all of their friends and so on. And we don't know nothing that is happening. Yeah. And, and, you know, and those growing years are very important because those growing years are, are is what is the direction that the child is absorbing everything that is happening around him and the way that things are going. And uh, if, if the child uh, by himself it's already got maybe some sort of uh, mental crisis or uh, a hard uh, adjusting 
social adjustments, and so on and so forth, uh, then we have a problem. And they, then there is no parental support. You know, so when we are looking at special and specifically at school safety, because, you know, that's a whole different issue. Now here we're not talking about anything else. We're talking about school safety. At school, you know, there is a school police. You know, you know our good friend, a state yeah. representative for District 114, Robert Asensio, used to be a lieutenant for a school police here in Miami-Dade County. Yeah. And he used to serve with special forces. Yeah. You know, he was actually a special forces guy. So I relate to all of this in a very direct manner, right? So I think that to best protect our kids, we have to study the infrastructure of the school, where the entrances and exits of the school. Uh, one of the uh, uh, senators at the meeting the other day was talking about the uh, the safety of our windows. Do we have uh, uh, what bulletproof you call windows. bulletproof windows in the schools? Uh, you know, metal detectors. Why do we have all these things at the airport? Or you cannot go into a federal building without going through a police check. You cannot even take your cellular inside the uh, buildings. You, you know, you have the airport, the malls, the banks. Every actor has got their own private uh, security and everybody's armed. Yeah. But when he goes to school, then we say, well, no, we don't want a school. We don't, uh, school is a, is a gun-free area. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, in today's environment, we have seen where ISIS has killed 150 kids, you know, in one thing. We yeah. have terrorism going on. We need to protect, we need to, we, we need to be proactive in protecting our children in school. So I'm all for hard in school. I think that that's a, you know, a person that has a, the, the, the special training. I'm also all for registration, you know, because the, the fact is, you know, I've always owned guns. You know, I still do, but my guns have always, I've always registered my guns, you know, and, I, and I've had some specific training, you know, so I've, I've, I've attended, uh, you know, different uh, 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 sort of training through different uh, 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 policing organizations and so on. And, uh, and it is very important that you know how to keep the weapon safe at home, uh, uh, you know, when you are in your vehicle, uh, if you're a guard or, you know, or somebody who's going to have a concealed weapon in school. But this could make the difference in saving the lives of many of our children. The same as we have, we, we, we have, we have uh, you go to the airport and you see all these military guys walking around with, uh, you know, with all this <laughs> war machinery, as yeah. I say, you know. So why not keep, you know, our kids secure? We have budgets for everything when we want to. I think that it is necessary, it's very important that we be proactive, you know, with our school safety, our children, and that uh, if it takes, if it takes some of the personnel that are qualified in each school to carry a concealed weapon, that might, save the life of your child. It's true. It's true. So do you think that teachers should be armed? As I said, you know, if they are if they are trained, if they if they have, have a weapon experience, if they have, you know, have been in the military before then or yes. things like this, you know, like we were talking, we have four hundred and fifty thousand uh, ex military guys uh, ex uh, uh, you know, ready and available right now to to uh, get hired part -time. To, to be hired yeah. part time yeah. or full time or whatever you need to to protect them to serve in school. Yeah, why not? No, I know. You know, yeah. so it's very important because it's not just you know when you got the kids going to school in the morning when you got the kids going to school leaving the school. You know, you got a, a, a time time period, maybe from 7 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. let's say, basic time. Okay. I, would love to, I would love to see, I would love to know that at least there is one, two, or three people 
in the school grounds during that period of time that are, you know, armed. That are armed yeah. and that can be a response their their response time can be two minutes or one minute because that can save many lives absolutely you know see absolutely. you know that that kid the, the unfortunate kid because he's, he's an unfortunate violent kid 19 years old that committed all those crimes there he took six sec six minutes to do all that all that damage six minutes so imagine that now if we have somebody on the ground that it could be on the first floor, it could be on the football field, or, or in the cafeteria, or whatever, you know, teaching class, who has a weapon, who knows how to use it, who is an ex-military -ex person. I want him to be there. Okay. I want him to save the life of that child, that one child. I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the actual topic of the, of the episode of the campaign grind, it was, should your campaign take a stance on a controversial issue? As obviously you could tell now, we did talk about gun control. Um, and we did get a question from, from somebody from the audience, Mike, just wanted to know should he base his campaign on, on, on a poll. Um, so should your campaign take a stance on an issue? Listen, as I said before, you are the one that's going to have to make that ultimate decision. Um, you got to know the demographics of your race. You got to know who the, who the quality voters are and who's going to turn out to vote in your election. And whether taking that stance is going to harm or do good for your campaign. Well, it, 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 but it is very important that you that you have the feel that you that you that you yeah. know your community, because you're going to have to answer questions and you're going to have to be substantially involved yeah. in the the daily life of your community if you get elected. So no, I agree. You know. I agree. So, like I said, this is a decision you're going to have to make yourself for your campaign. Um, you're going to have to sleep with yourself at night whether you're going to be for or against it, but you truly believe the other way uh that's a decision you got to make but um mr ray valdez thank you very much sir thank you Pedro. thank you for all right as again. always if, if you guys have any questions whatsoever please feel free to give me a call 305-860-1010 305-860-1010 or shoot me an email pedro at dscampaigns.com pedro at dscampaigns.com i'd rather they sent you an email don't shoot so, him an email okay so send me an email pedro at dscampaigns.com or stalk, me, stalk us on all social media platforms at Campaign Mentor. Until next time, I am Pedro Diaz, signing out.